Hello fellow gamers and welcome to another week of The Gaming Frontier. My name's Chase. And I'm Chris. And this week our summary of releases closes out the month of March and opens up April for business. Alright then folks, let's kick this one off strong. On the 28th of March we'll be seeing the launch of the Oculus Rift. Heralded as the future of gaming, this VR headset will be launching with up to 30 games at a variety of price options, so be sure to stay tuned to hear our thoughts after this rundown. Now the Rift is out of the way, we've got quite a few games to get through here, so bear with me as we run down the 29th of March. Get ready to step up to the plate as the 16th instalment of the Major League Baseball series, MLB The Show, will be looking to score a home run on PS3 and PS4. Now if zombies sound more like your cup of tea, Capcom will be releasing Resident Evil 6 on the PS4 and Xbox One, whilst everyone's favourite storytellers, Telltale Games, will be releasing the second episode of The Walking Dead Michonne on PC, OS X, iOS, Android, PSN and Xbox Live. Proving they're not all doom and gloom though, fans of Minecraft Story Mode will be seeing the fifth episode released across all platforms. Now if you're looking for something a little bit more indie and a little bit more action packed, Beta Dwarf Entertainment will be bringing their deck building arena brawler Force Showdown to PC, and that's looking pretty flashy. And as remasters seem to be all the rage so far this year, Stranger of Sword City, a dungeon crawler originally developed for the Xbox 360, will be getting a remaster for Xbox One. Just a few more left now hang in there, as the spiritual successor to the Clock Tower series, Nightcry, will be coming to PC, iOS, Android and PS Vita. And fighting game fans have something to look forward to as the third season of Killer Instinct, promising new characters and levels, will be coming to Xbox One, as well as debuting on the Windows 10 store. And finally, rounding off the 29th of March, we'll be seeing Chronicles of Teddy, Harmony of Exodus, a 2D action adventure developed by Axis, releasing on PS4 and a day later on the Wii U. Joining the Wii U release of Chronicles of Teddy, on the 30th of March comes an atmospheric action-adventure game, Epistory Typing Chronicles. Developed by Fishing Cactus, this title will be available on PC. And finally, we're here. The end of the releases for March. The 31st is a good one for all you MotoGP fans, as you'll be seeing the release of MXGP2, the official motocross game, come racing to the PC, Xbox One and PS4. Something a little different now, as Ashes of Singularity, a futuristic real-time strategy developed by Oxides Games and Stardock Entertainment, arrives on PC. Also coming to PC is Hyperlight Drifter, a 16-bit styled action-adventure RPG developed by Heart Machine. To kick off the new month on April 1st, in the hope that these releases aren't bogus ones, comes Knights of Azure an action-adventure RPG from Koei Tecmo making its debut in the West on the PS4. Compile Ha are also porting one of their titles to the West as they bring their strategy RPG Trillion, God of Destruction, to the PS Vita. Subnautica, an open-world underwater adventure game already available on PC, finally makes its way to Xbox One. And to close out this week, Stickbold, a dodgeball adventure game, launches itself on PC, with a later release available on PS4 and Xbox One. And with that concludes our releases for this week. So my top pick for this week has to be the Oculus Rift. Now this release is a pretty big deal, with TechEd's calling it a revolution for computing. Now hopefully this means great things for us gamers, and I for one am looking forward to it. So Rift itself is not just going to be the headset, there's also going to be an Xbox One controller and a sensor used to track your head movement when you're buying that. Now unfortunately it's not going to be there on release, but there's also a special controller that they've been developing for the Rift called the Oculus Touch. And what that's going to do is it's going to be tracking your hand movements through real time, through the space in front of you. And to be fair, this, it all sounds pretty intense. No, for sure, because one of my favourite films is uh, Minority Report, and I think the Oculus Touch brings about that futuristic technology to our modern day gamers. And it's, it's good to see that technology being used, um, especially accessible to our gaming industry's developers, because I can't wait to interact with games 
in the way that Tom Cruise interacts with his uh, criminal screen, so that's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, that's, that's a good point you raise, and the thing with this VR gaming and computing now as it is, is it's all about the immersion, and you know, the Oculus Touch is definitely going to be bringing that to the platform, and I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be excited for this. So I went ahead and had a look at the 30 titles that are going to be launching with the Rift and I took it upon myself to pick a, a three or so out for us to have a chat about, you know. I think you'll enjoy learning about these, getting your opinion on them, it'll be quite nice. So I've decided to pick uh, Eve Valkyrie, uh, Adrift and a game called Dreadhalls. Now for Eve Valkyrie, this is going to come bundled with the Rift so you're not going to be looking for a game to play when you buy it. But uh, it's based in the Eve universe, it's a space sim. But this one's going to be focused a lot more around dogfighting and squad combat uh, in spaceships. So that's sounding like the best way to break in your VR headset to me. No, yeah, definitely. Space as a platform is always going to be a very appealing place to start the VR era. Because, to be honest, not a lot of us are going to be around for public space travel. So to bring that to the modern day gamer, to give them access to it, is going to be absolutely amazing. Because not only are these games immersive, but the visuals that they bring as well, they just make the whole experience so much more visually stunning. You're not going to find any argument from me there on that one. That's not all that we're going to be seeing on the Rift though, if we dial back the action a bit. We're still in space, but it's something a bit more atmospheric and story driven. Uh, there's a game called Adrift, uh, I think you might like this one. It's uh, shaping up to be quite an impressive looking first person tale. You play an astronaut that's trapped amongst the wreckage of a destroyed space station. No, yeah, I've kept some tabs on this one because it looks, as I said, <laughs> another game that looks absolutely stunning again. This game is, is looking really, really good. And to be honest, with the Oculus Rift and the sort of first person aspect that this game will give you, um, it's going to be very, very immersive. And as I said, space is another great platform to be in for this VR gaming to land on, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm yeah. definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, it's, it's going to be nice to physically move things around. Like, you feel like you're going to be doing that again. Like you say, it's going to be so immersive and just so exciting. Moving on to my last game. Now, you know how much I like my horror games, so if I tell you the title Dreadhalls, you probably know what's going to be coming here. It's a first person horror game. Uh, it's going to be, I think, launching as well, yeah, with the Oculus Rift. It's going to be amnesia style, procedurally generated though. You start off in a dungeon, got to get to the exit, all sorts of nasties, and you, you've got your trusty lantern, you've got to get from the start to the finish without dying. Yeah, and horror in itself is a very popular platform for this this sort of gaming as well. I mean, you can just look at the famous YouTubers out there and they're all doing it, you know. This genre of game is so popular with VR gaming, it's ridiculous. But, you know, it's it's going to be something to definitely look out for because why why not make the first step into VR you chucking the VR headset through the window because you're so terrified. <laughs> it's expensive, but it's an experience, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely a word for it, uh, for sure. It's going to be an experience that hopefully I'm not going to be throwing a headset through the window that cost me uh, $600, but you never know. <laughs> Sat there in the dark with my headset on with the touch and crawling through dark corridors and then getting spooked. Who knows what could happen, you know? At the very least, maybe my headset will break, you know? That, that could be something. But yeah, it's looking like there's not going to be any shortage of support for games for this. It's People are on board, people are excited about it. I mean, they've already got EVE online, so hopefully we're going to get some great titles as the Rift gets older. Now, of course, as with any bleeding edge invention, it's going to cost you a pretty penny to be buying into the Oculus Rift. At around $600, which is roughly converted to around £410, you'll be expecting to pay somewhere around that ballpark for this uh, entry into the VR world. Speaking of the entry of the VR world, it's it's everywhere now. With the sort of coming of the Oculus Rift, you've got places like HTC and Sony releasing the Vive and the PlayStation VR respectively, and AMD also recently announcing the Liquid VR. So it, it is everywhere, and PlayStation VR is a cheaper option, but you do need a PS4 for that, so you know, it's something to look at uh, if you really want to enter the sort of VR realms of, of gaming now. Yeah, for sure, and obviously I've not had a chance to try VR myself yet, and at that price I think I might be waiting just a little bit longer. But for all you lucky folks picking it up, 
but or looking to get it, it'll be launching with 30 titles and it'll be out on the 28th of March. So this title recently caught my eye, and I was quite surprised at the lack of details about this game leading up to its launch. Hyper Light Drifter, a 16-bit style hack and slash, is my top pick for this week. From its vivid visuals to its flashy gameplay, this title looks only to impress and wow its players. The game adopts a top-down slanted camera angle, similar to games like Binding of Isaac and the old Legend of Zelda games, but the game runs at a much faster pace. The levels look big and vibrant, allowing enemies to spawn in a multitude of numbers, and at times it looks like it gets quite manic, but your character isn't without their trusty abilities to deal with these enemies. Your dodge is lightning fast and can be used in quick succession. Pair that up with your attacks and you begin to dwindle their numbers down at a fairly rapid pace. All in all, the game gives you methods to cope and style on what foes are set upon you. So when you mentioned this game to me, the first thing I did is I went and watched the trailers, and uh, the first trailer I saw was for the combat, and well, let's just say the guy sliced a rocket in half with his freaking sword. <laughs> so, you know, that's already got me sold. I don't need anything else. I'm already playing this game. But then he went on to show all these flashy tricks he was doing with his Jedi energy light sword, and all these these quick succession of dashes that you mentioned before to get around these maps and kill all these enemies and it's just exciting to see there's uh, there's guns in there as well as the swords so you've got a ranged method of taking out enemies and just looking at the whole package it just looks like the game gives you the methods and the tools needed to just murder people the way you want <laughs> and with those different methods uh, comes the styling of the game and I'm all up for bringing the flashiness to this level of gameplay, to be honest. So, all in all, it looks like a real experience, pairing high impact action with absolutely stunning visuals. So I know last week I did pick a 16-bit title uh, under the name Slain, but can you blame me? Hyperlight Drifter does look yes. really good. <laughs> does look really good. Visually, it's just pleasing to see every detail that they put into this game. The colours, they're so vibrant and they just seem to bring everything that's on screen to life. They've put some great detail in the animation and the cutscenes and it makes the game stand out. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to agree with you, I guess. Um, you know my opinion on the 16-bit games. I made it pretty clear last week, but this game is looking a bit different. You know, it's a bit more stylized. It's not as jaggedy as the old Slain was and that, you know, the old 16-bit style. Uh, you know, I got some vibes of things like Bastion and Transistor and Risk of Rain. I know you've played. Yep, yep. I think you've played all those, so, you know, it's... It's got some good things going on for it, so I'm not going to completely write <laughs> this one off for being a 16-bit title. So, alongside that, uh, from watching the trailers, the animations for like the dashing and the Jedi energy sword that the main character has and things like that, they're looking super slick as well, so the, you know, the game's looking pretty fantastic. No, definitely. I mean, it's a couple of the visuals with a soundtrack that's, that sort of shifts it down a notch, because you see all these different colours on screen and expect a soundtrack to be bubbly and bouncy you know something that gets you hyped but it's quite dark yeah. and depressing and you know it, it, it's quite interesting because it might help the storytelling in the game like we obviously we don't we won't know what what the story entails but you know it, it, it makes it seem like the game has something to hide yeah that, that could work out to be quite an interesting dynamic you know you've got all these nice bright flashy animations and colors and then you've got this really like dark and mysterious soundtrack that underpins the whole thing and like you say it could easily tie into some story elements maybe about the main character themselves or maybe the world as a whole that's it's going to be an interesting dynamic to have a look at yep and that's that's why it's my top pick for this week uh hyper light drifter is coming out on the 31st of march on steam so yeah keep your eyes open because this game's gonna be pretty big Okay then, ladies and gents, that's a wrap on the releases for this week. And as always, if there are any titles we've missed, we'll be covering them on our Facebook slash TG Frontier, or giving a quick shout out on our Twitter at TG Frontier, so be sure to keep your eye on those. Now if you've noticed something we may have missed, 
do let us know in the comments and we'll include it in the write-up on our blog and if you like what we're doing be sure to give us a like and a subscribe for future updates. And if you have any comments on how we can improve or the format of the show itself please do leave us a message below and we'll be sure to get back to you. As always thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.